Hey guys, I wanted to tell you about the three worlds of improvisation. So when I teach improvisation in the beginning, I guide things into three different worlds. So I call it the three worlds of improvisation or three different sounds that your improvisations are gonna come from. Now, a lot of people will get lost in all the information that you have out there on the internet, in the world. A lot of guitar teachers just teach the way that they learned. And with all my courses, all my instruction, I just wanna get my students to playing exactly what they wanna play and expressing themselves as fast as possible. When you're first starting out, you're like, what the hell, man? Wait, are we talking major, minor? What's a dominant seventh? What's a major seventh? What is all this? It's a lot of terms and vocabulary that can kind of be overwhelming. Well, so take a look at this picture that I made. And this is gonna hit most of the things you see. You can put them into one of these three categories. Um, you'll notice that over in the dominant world, you can play major sounds and minor sounds on top of them. That, and that takes a little bit, little bit of finesse, but going back to what I was saying about a place to organize it and know what you're doing, putting your scales, chords, songs in these three different categories will really help you access what's appropriate to play. So, um, for instance, I know a, guy, a bunch of guys that they've spent a lot of time learning all these scales and they feel like the scale master, but when they go to play, they either don't know the right place to use them or they just sound kind of practicey. Now, there's a little bit of context needed. So like if you're playing a blues sound, you need to spend time in that language. If you're playing a Latin type of uh, sound or you're playing reggae, you need to immerse yourself in that style to learn the language. But knowing a bunch of scales and knowing how to use them will allow you to learn these styles and languages very fast if we're gonna make that analogy, style of music and language. It's very similar. Once you have it kind of organized like that, you can make your improvisations. And it's easy, much, much easier. So if you, you know you're playing something that's like a standard pop song. Your minor pentatonic scale probably is not gonna bring that song to life. It doesn't really match. If you see a minor chord progression, like a stray cat strut, or um, what is it, uh, Mary Jane's Last Dance, Last Dance with Mary Jane, or you're gonna be wanting, you're gonna be using your minor sounds and knowing how to get those as fast as possible will allow you to really enjoy your playing and learn things super fast. Then when you look at something like a blues song, you're like, wait, it sounds kind of major-ish, but there's these, you know, minor like licks on top of it. What's going on with that? And you can organize things into that dominant category knowing that it's gonna be totally different. Completely different set of rules, completely different set of um, phrases depending not only on the style of music, but what kind of sound is happening. So I keep talking about these different sounds, different worlds. So I'm kind of using the word world to mean like a whole sound. Is your song based on a major scale? Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, like a pop song or a Disney song or something like that. Um, or is it a minor sound? Like a piece of Latin music or Hotel California something like that, or is it a dominant sound? So maybe it's like a blues song, it's based on dominant seventh chords. What sounds are going to work with that? Completely different world, although a lot of the tools are gonna to be the same. As I'm recording this video, I'm working on my Blue Belt course, which is my first intermediate course. I have my beginner course, the white belt course done, and I'm just super happy with it. My students are moving very quickly through that and they're just learning the real skills that you need to play for other people to just really know that you're getting good. Well, my blue belt course, I'm getting my students into the beginning of um, improvisation. So they're intermediate students, but they need some kind of framework 
I don't load people down with scales in the beginning, but I give them a, a couple and get them really making music with those few tools in all these contexts. That gives this confidence and it gives us a like foundation that you can really build on. So if you're kind of scared off by a bunch of terms or having to memorize a bunch of scales and all that stuff, that's fine. That's cool. It doesn't have to be like that. If you could just find one thing, get really good at that and then build on that, you're going to be much happier and you're going to be making music that you like much sooner. So, um, if you're watching this video and it's after January 2023, the Blue Belt course is probably out. Go check it out. See if there's stuff on there that you want to learn. Um, get yourself in a program where you're, you need to be accountable for what you're doing and it pushes you. If it's not my program, do something. But keep getting better and don't shy away, don't shy away from getting technical or getting theoretical. Because that whole point of view where people say like it's going to take away their natural feel... That's all, that's BS. That's, that's based on fear or laziness. If you really love music, you can run towards it and you can learn the science of music and it's easier than you think as long as you have the right framework. So, is what you're playing a major key? Is what you're playing in a minor key? Or is it based on a dominant sound? Anyway, hit me with some co comments and questions. I would love to get a conversation going about this. Thanks for watching, you guys.